Let's design a fish trap. Here are the rules. The fish you wish to trap can be up to 30 centimeters long. So here's the beautiful diagram of a fish, 30 centimeters long. The trap should be four times longer than the fish you wish to trap. Okay, so here's the fish trap. Now be careful, I used this diagram from a previous case study. We can't mix those up. So let's erase this result here. So four times longer is 30 times four, which is 120 centimeters. The ratio of length to body depth of these fish is typically five to one. So this is 30 centimeters. And if the height is only one fifth of that, 30 divided by five is six. The diameter of the trap opening, which is gonna be here, should be six times the body depth of the fish you wish to trap. Six times five. Six times six is 36. The branches that form the length of the trap are two centimeters in diameter. This is an old drawing, but looks like it's the same right here. And have a gap of three centimeters between them at the trap opening. So this is the trap opening here, this big circle. And yes, indeed, there's a three centimeter gap. Support rings are required every eight centimeters along the length of the trap. So every eight centimeters, there's a support ring going across here, laterally. So every eight centimeters, we have a new circle. So think about the length of this fish trap, 120 centimeters. There's gonna be a lot of support rings. 120 divided by eight is 15. Now, 15 parts is a lot. Now, what if there were only two parts required? How many support rings do we have in total? If there's only two parts, one and two, you would need one, two, three support rings. Now, what if you needed three parts for your fish trap? One part, two part, three parts. You would need one, two, three, four support rings. So the number of support rings is always gonna be one more than the number of parts. So if you have 15 parts, there's gonna be 16 support rings. Let's read this marking guide. So the way you show your work, you have to demonstrate a good understanding of the situation. We need to show a coherent process. We need to calculate the trap length and diameter. And we have to be careful using circumference. And just how we reasoned right now, we need to recognize that the number of support rings would be one more than the calculated number of eight centimeter intervals. We have eight centimeter here, 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 here. That's here and here. And it's good to show your work, showing that you're working towards a correct solution. The trap length is four times the fish length. So here's a diagram, the fish length is 30. Four times 30 is 120. So here, we're just trying to understand the problem, but it's good to show your work. And we have a very clear formula here. The trap diameter is going to be based off the fish length divided by five, which happens to be this over here. Now, where does the time six come from? It comes from this given information over here, six times the body depth. Now, why would you be interested in the trap circumference? And the formula obviously is, and the formula would be circumference equals pi d. We need to have the circumference formula because we need to actually identify the dimensions and the number of branches we need to build this trap. So the circumference is 36 pi, pi times the diameter, diameter being 36 centimeters. Now, what's interesting here is that this is true for the opening circumference. However, if this is a cone shape, I would imagine that the circles towards the end of the other side of the, of the fish trap would be a bit smaller. So this here is a, this, this is important to note. So even though the gap is three centimeters between these little branches, 
It's important to note that the actual distance from the center point from one branch to another is five centimeters. So the circumference, which is the total perimeter of the circle, divided by five, the distance between branch to branch, is going to be the number of actual branches. So we have the circumference divided by five is approximately 22.6. So what we're discussing is all over here. So you have to somehow communicate this as well, not just randomly writing num numbers all over the place. So we described the features of a solution demonstrating a good understanding of the situation. Now it's up to you to actually put this all together with neat handwriting in a coherent manner. Good luck.